Hey guys, nice, bright, and sunny day out here in the downtown area and uh, just checking up on my antique display case for this week. I actually got some games that I'm gonna throw in. I just bring a couple of games in each week to uh, add to the case. Here we are at our display case for this weekend. It was a bit crowded in here, so I didn't do a lot of talking uh, while I was here. So just gonna do this voiceover to give you guys an update uh, on our second month of having a display case in this antique mall. I'm not going to spoil you guys the total amount that we have sold so far. I'll probably wait till um, the end of the month to give you guys all the numbers and how much we made. But I can't say we started off amazingly for this month. We actually hit our $200 mark and it's only halfway through the month. So hoping to continue with our sales for the end of the month. Uh, I think someone might have came in and just bought a ton of stuff or I don't know. Maybe we had a lot of sales on one day, but uh, if anybody is watching and bought some stuff, just want to give a big thanks to you guys for helping me and supporting me on my journey with this display case. I actually brought a lot of uh, NES games this week and also some like $8 games. I just want to fill up the open spots in my case. Um, and the plan is to just bring a couple games each day or each week that I come in uh, to check on the case. I brought some PlayStation 2 games. You got the Hobbit and the Star Wars Starfighter games. These games go for around like eight bucks. So we'll be adding those in and also brought some Wii games, some Mario games. I feel like are great for the display case. But I think it's really important just to keep on loading up this case, especially when I do get a decent amount of sales. And this is what we have now after filling up this display case. Added some more Mario games. I added some more higher end games to the case as well just to add some variety. And then stacked up on these cheaper games, these $8 and $5 games. Hey guys, we're back at home and I just wanted to show you guys a nice pickup that I recently got. I had an old co-worker friend um, actually hit me up and said he loved my videos. And uh, he had a bunch of inventory games that he was uh, looking to sell and offload. So he hit me up first and I made a trip to his place and looked over all of his stuff and definitely wanted to make some offers on some games that he had. Unfortunately, I did not get to record like anything over there. I probably should have, but I did come away with this uh, box of stuff and I'm just going to go over it with you guys. Reason why I'm showing you guys in this video is because I'm planning on putting a decent amount of this stuff in my display case. And just to show you guys how I kind of source some of my items, how much I paid for stuff, and how much I actually do get to profit. My friend is actually an older generation player. He grew up in like the 80s and 90s, so he doesn't collect a lot of the newer stuff. Um, and he was looking to get rid of some duplicates as well. And to me, I feel like I'm the younger generation, so I do love collecting the newer, modern console games and things like that. So big shout out to my friend Jay for uh, inviting me over to his place and letting me purchase some of his stuff he was looking to offload. He was actually going to send pr pretty much everything to a game store and see how much they would offer in credit or cash. Usually game stores offer around 40 to 50% of like price charting. That's just what I've seen from my experience. So... To me, I honestly tried to offer more than that, but since, you know, Jay is a, a good friend of mine, he's given me homie prices and deals on this stuff. Let's go ahead and open this up. So right off the bat, I paid $200 for all of this. I brought $200 in cash to his place, and I said, let me just fill up a box full of stuff um, and equal up to $200 that you would be happy to sell these for. So I'm going to start with these Amiibos. I'm not going to throw all of this stuff in my display case or even sell, actually. Um, so Amiibos is something that I'm recently starting to collect, especially because I'm a huge fan of Smash Bros. and Smash Bros. Ultimate. So I would love to collect all of these Amiibos for these characters. So these all go for like around like 15-ish a piece, 15, 20. And I actually bought these for $5 a piece from him. I think he purchased these from a yard sale for super cheap. So I'm sure he's profiting something for this. Uh, you can actually see a lot of cartridge games. And one of my strategies when I was over there making him offers was I said, let me just get your cheap stuff. Let me get all of the uh, cheap games that have no value. Because I'm perfectly fine with grabbing these um, NES games. He probably won't get much from the game store. So 
And I didn't want to lowball him on the higher end stuff. And I'm pretty sure he could probably get better offers. I'm actually not that interested in NES games. But, you know, the more I have, the better, I guess, just to have. And probably throw in my display case. So you got, like, these NES games. I'm not familiar with these. So I'm not going to speak much about them. I got these all for, like, a dollar a piece from him. He was totally fine with giving me these games for that little. So I probably got, like, 15 or 20 of these games. Some doubles as well. Uh, this is a decently popular one, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, a lot of doubles again. So cool that I was able to get these for pretty cheap. I probably am going to throw a lot of these in my display case. I don't even know if people are interested in these uh, lower end games for the NES. But I know the NES is a popular console. There's a lot of collectors. Ooh, I'm going to have to clean up a lot of this stuff as well. So got to take that into account. A lot of the stuff is kind of dirty. So... Um, it's kind of fun for me to just go through and clean. It's kind of like therapeutic and soothing for me to just uh, clean and restore a lot of these older games into better condition. So next, I'll probably go over these newer games. So I got some Switch games. I offered him like $10 a piece for these. They were big Final Fantasy fans, I guess. Final Fantasy VII. And I actually haven't played this. So these, these are going to my personal collection. I've recently started collecting for the Nintendo Switch. And then you actually have like a lot of uh, cheaper PlayStation 3 games. He didn't have like a lot of higher end games. Um, so I ended up getting a lot of these for like three bucks a piece. Um, so like Bla Blaze Blue, I don't think this is worth much. Um, PlayStation 4 games. Fallout New Vegas, my favorite game of all time actually. Uh, Bioshock, one of my favorites. Dead Rising 2. Batman, Arkham City. So I have a lot of these in my personal collection already as well. So... Um, I don't know, maybe I just throw them in the display case for like five bucks um, and profit a little bit. But there actually is some decent stuff in here as well. So Fallout 3, Game of the Year Edition, Black Ops 3, Skyrim. I mean, they have some amazing taste in games. Uh, these are all the games that I enjoy playing. Uh, Spyro, I'm not sure how much this one values for nowadays. And then uh, Yakuza on the PlayStation 2. I think this one might have some value, probably around like... 15 ish dollars and it is complete and then finishing up so this one right here is actually a pretty rare game i saw it's a limited run game and uh this was uh my one of my friend's favorite games this is like a re-release or reimagining of this game it's a lot older the original one was i tried looking this up on ebay and i just couldn't find many listings of this so maybe this is one that i do keep and actually try out uh, Nino Kuni was a game that you know I've definitely wanted to try out as well. Great uh, animations, but I don't think it's really worth much. Uh, Silent Hill. This one goes for like twenty-ish dollars. So great to be able to get this on a deal. This one is probably the most valuable out of the newer generation stuff. So uh, my friend's actually a big like Warhammer fan and tabletop. He received this as a gift and wanted to play it, but he just never had time. So he just gave this to me as well. This thing actually goes for like maybe $30 or $40 brand new and sealed. So yeah, pretty nice pickup. And then Little Big Planet 3. And next we've got some uh, Super Nintendo games. These he was a little bit iffy on giving to me because uh, he did want to keep. These are like a little bit higher end games. They all go for around like maybe $15 to $20. Bubsy, um, Aero Acrobat, Lagoon... Arkanoid, I think there was one more as well, um, and Clay Fighters. So they they all go for fifteen to twenty, and I paid ten dollars a piece for these. So, and then next we've got some N sixty four games. I forgot how much I paid for these. Um, we got Namco Museum. You got Diddy Kong Racing, really popular one. I think I just sold this one in the uh, display case as well. Star Fox sixty four, Army Men, and then this one he gave to me for free. A Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. He said this one wasn't working. So I'll work on cleaning this up and seeing if I can get it to work. And then lastly, he had a bunch of controllers. And I told him that, you know, I do pretty well with controllers in my display case. So uh, one of the things is I'm going to have to clean a lot of this up. He said that these were all working. So I'll clean them up and test them. And uh, if they do work, I'll throw these in the display case. I actually got all of these for $2 a piece. 
Uh, he was totally fine with giving it to me for that much. He didn't want to deal with these. I don't know how much game stores offer for PlayStation 2 controllers. This is actually a PlayStation 3 controller. Uh, again, really dirty. The uh, sticks are really sticky. So, yeah, about like five controllers, uh, even a PlayStation 1 controller. Yeah, definitely going to have to clean these up. But that's pretty much everything that I got for $200. Just wanted to show you guys, gonna throw a decent amount of this stuff in my display case. But really happy that my friend reached out to me. I haven't seen him in like years, um, ever since college. We worked on campus together uh, doing like classroom support. And he had a ton of great stuff to show me and to sell to me. Gave me amazing deals. So again, big thanks to my good friend Jay. Before I end off the video, just wanted to go over some updates and talk to you guys about some of the behind the scenes stuff I do uh, when setting up for my display case and even selling at like conventions and things like that. I always clean all of my games, uh, just cleaned all these controllers. They look a lot nicer now. I didn't test this one out, but I did test all of the PlayStation 1 and 2 controllers and one of the controllers did not work. Not sure what to do with those controllers that just don't work, but the rest of these are looking good and do seem to be working. All the games I cleaned up, just wiped it with some Clorox wipes. Uh, I organized these in piles of uh, what I will be pricing these at, so like $5 games. These will be like $8 games and these will be like $10 games. For the Nintendo cartridge games, I do clean them all up and clean the pins with some isopropyl alcohol. And I do throw them in these plastic bags. They just look a lot nicer and gives me um, some space to put these stickers on them without actually ruining it. I guess for the NES cartridges, they're a lot bigger. But for like N64, Super Nintendo, it's a little harder to stick like stickers on them. Picked up these uh, removable sticker labels. These are like a dollar a piece. Uh, you can find them anywhere. I think I got this at Walmart. And I picked up these plastic bags on Amazon. Got more stickers right there. So I'll just be going through and labeling everything now so I can include in my display case. So I wanted to give you guys some updates about some upcoming events. So I will be attending the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, it's a convention in the downtown Milwaukee area. And I have like tons and tons of games that I hope to sell there. And... For all the games that I do not sell there, I will absolutely be throwing in my display case, especially all the higher end stuff. So I will have some greater items in my display case after the event. And then also for the $10 game collection series, I already mentioned to you guys, I think in this week's um, episode, that I will be ending the series soon, at the end of April. Once I do that, some of those games that I do have in my collection that I have doubles of, I will absolutely be able to put them in the display case as well. So I've got a lot of inventory that I will soon be able to throw in my display case and include in this but yeah guys that's just a couple of updates that I just wanted to give you guys before I ended off this video I'm excited to go over with you guys how much I made at my display case for the second month I think we have like a couple weeks left so uh, stay tuned for that but that's pretty much all I have if you guys do have any questions or anything you want to ask me just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer them but for the most part, that's all I got for now. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, strange little episode. But I'll see you guys on the next one.